Um, Mr. President, do you think Elon Musk is a threat to U.S. national security? And should the U.S. and with the tools you have investigate his joint acquisition of Twitter with foreign governments, which include the Saudis? <laughs> I think that Elon Musk's cooperation and or technical relationships with other countries uh, is worthy of being looked at. Whether or not he is doing anything inappropriate I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that it's worth, worth being looked at. Um, and uh, um, and uh, but that's all I'll say. And just a quick one. Um, obviously, a lot of attention on 2024 now that the votes have been cast in the midterms. Two-thirds of Americans in exit polls say that they don't think you should run for re-election. What is your message to them, and how does that factor into your final decision about whether or not to run for re-election? It doesn't. What's your message to them? To those two-thirds of Americans? Watch me. <laughs> okay, one more. Come on. Um, <laughs> very, very quickly, um, we saw Governor Ron DeSantis with a resounding victory in Florida uh, last night. Who do you think would be the tougher competitor, Ron DeSantis or former President Trump? And how is that factoring into your decision? It'll be fun watching them take on each other. Thank you, Mr. President. I also have a question for you about um, China. But before I do, I just wanted to follow up on something you said earlier. When you said it remains to be seen whether the Ukraine government is prepared to compromise with Russia. Previously, you've told us the only thing for the Russians to do is get completely out of Ukraine, go back to the, the lines that existed prior to February 24. Are you suggesting with the word compromise that you think that there is room for territorial compromise now? That no, I'm not. Yeah, that's up to the Ukrainians. Nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. So what kind of compromise do you have in mind? I didn't have any in mind. Uh, you have asked the question whether or not, if I recall, whether or not what would happen if, in fact, after the, this, I, I think the context is that whether or not they're pulling back from Fallujah and the, I mean, from the, the Kherson, the, the city of Kherson, and they're coming back across the river to the eastern side of the river, the Russian forces. And I said, what's going to happen is they're going to all both lick their wounds, decide whether what they're going to do over the winter and decide whether or not they're going to compromise. That's, that's what's going to happen, whether or not. I don't know what they're going to do. And, but I do know one thing. We're not going to tell them what they have to do. You were asked before about uh, your meeting with President Xi. Um, at this point, the Chinese government, by the estimate of the Pentagon, is getting ready to um, bring their force of nuclear weapons up to over 1,000 weapons, significant uh, increase from what they've had for many decades. Um, you've seen the threats from uh, President Putin about the use of his nuclear weapons. Remember forces. how you all went after me when I said that was real? And, and what, what, in your view, happened? Do you think he, he backed off because of that? No, no, I'm just saying. I just, I just found it interesting that uh, Biden's being a popular, a, 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 a cop, a cop, Biden's being an extremist. Um, and, uh, and it turns out you all are writing about it now. Kind of fascinating. All right, President Biden heading out. A lot of uh, questions being asked of him.